Hi guys, this is Deb Kirk at Dog Tricks of the Trade here at Candy Springers, Best in Show Pet Grooming, York, Pennsylvania. I'm going to be working on Noah. He's a big, big boy, uh, male Springer today. He is, I'm going to be putting him into a summer uh, pet trim, but like I've always said before, the only difference between show trimming and pet trimming is how you treat the top coat. This top coat's going to get buzzed off with a 7F. His feathering obviously going to be shorter. Pet people don't need all that 14, 15, 16 inches worth of feathering. So um, I've invited. Now, I, this is a trick I told everybody about the other day. Since he was a young puppy and I bred him, so I placed him into this home. So he has always been taught. Okay. Noah, now look how much easier that makes your life. Even for this big, big, big boy, and he's got a big 60 pounder. My bitches are 35 in show weight. All right, so this is Noah, and I am going to start from the very beginning because there are new show people out there pet owners who need to learn how to do all of these things from scratch. So, so. Now, one thing see what I mean about me being a microphone that actually works. disgusting oh well I can try one thing about this dryer when you are drying a dog I don't care if it's at home or at the dog show you continually go around the dog now I'll probably dry the ears but even then I go back and forth back and forth back and forth but you don't go to one place and just brush 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 get that dry go to the next one no you continually go around the dog this does get hot on their skin and besides that you're doing this the whole time this is a soft slicker and it still bothers me, so you rotate around the dog. people with here, me here today, but every place I put this camera, they're looking into the sunlight, and it is just too hot to close these windows. Well, he's not panting, but I don't want to close the windows. It's not hot enough for the air conditioner, and even when I'm drying a dog, I'm still doing that lifting and layering, but instead of my hand lifting, I'm letting the air, the blower lift the coat, see, and then I'm going underneath it and pulling the coat down. Now you drip my 
I had a longer cord, but doesn't. The hawks are always dried up, and that's true, even with pets. Now, one thing you never, never, never want to do is sit here like this. Never. Never. Not for any breed of dog. If you're going to do that, you might as well put him in the crate and stick a fan on him. Because all that's going to do is curl the coat. The, way, the only reason to hand dry a dog, the only reason to hand dry a dog is to get the coat straighter. So by doing this and using diffused heat, what do you do? Those girls with the perms makes it curly. So every, every place you have this dryer, you need to be having this slicker brush pull the hair straight. So wherever this dryer is separating that hair, That is where I am. Done. And again, yes, I am drying all this hair up. So at least when he goes home today, he has that dog show. Ring finish. This will poof up the hair. Yes, it is lifting the hair up. And it's going to give the appearance of him having more volume of hair. You know, the others come in and they hand you a check or a lot of money. They want that instant gratification. That first look at the dog. And I'm running a grimy chop, so wait, is it Kira? You can take that schnauzer out, put him on the back. If you don't have a white brush, get one, brush him out, and he can have a bath. Dawn. Smell good stuff at the top. No cream rinse on the feathers. his feet and this is a problem we all have you can either use one of those big stand-up dryers but owners aren't going to go to that expense so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to do it on high When I have this foot up, I'm actually, with this hand, I've got it under here, 
and I'm actually opening up the pads so the dryer can get all the way in between those toes. That is what I am doing there. And I usually do the ears first. Because the very first thing that people see when they come to get their dog is this. That's the picture they have in their mind. So I always, always, always do the ears first. And I work on the front. So that's the prettiest. The first thing they see. And the thing they see the whole ride home. Not going to see the dog's butt end. The dog's going to be sitting. Alright, so, like I always say, check your blades. I put this nine blade on before I even, because I had something else on it for the last dog. Okay. Alright, flat, tight, smooth surface. I'm not going to go over the basics. Even if you are a new pet person, go to my first pet grooming, first pet grooming tape in my YouTube series with um, Kira and even the show grooming one that's still there, my live feed. It's grainy and small because it was a cell phone, but it's still going to teach you how to manipulate and hold all the skin. He's a pet, so I am going to go against the grain. Anytime you clip her, you want a flat, tight, smooth surface. So I am making sure that I am making this a tight surface. And remember this little <coughs> nubby thing in there? I've got my magic fingers on it. I know exactly where it is. If this is your first time joining me, please go into my other YouTube videos. Watch the head video <coughs> with Troy and watch the Kira Pet Trim because I explain everything that I'm doing as far as how I'm operating and holding the clipper. I don't want to take that much time today because I've already said it once. Okay, then once again, Against the grain, he comes in every four weeks, once a month. I'm at the point. I've given all of my local clientele to my beloved friend and partner. And I, I kept all my, all my K and D clientele, all my Springers, and some hand-picked people who've literally been with me since I had the shop out at a strip mall in Helm. They're like on their third or fourth dogs with me. So once again, I'm keeping a flat, tight, smooth surface by pulling this back corner of the ear, the corner of the eye. And then the next line is here, corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth, on like an airplane, off like an airplane. Tight, flat, smooth surface in those yucky gums. Tight, flat, smooth surface. Go in there once and be done. Don't go carving it out. It's a very delicate place for a dog and you're gonna... Clipper burn, yes. A clipper burn isn't that you used a hot clipper, although that could happen. It's usually just because the clipper irritated the skin so badly. 
very gently I am going over the front of this nose from the back to the front to get the whiskers off. I'm not pressing down. By going this direction, it's actually going to pull the whisker into the clipper. So I don't have to worry about it. Under the throat, I always go with the grain. I never go against. This is a nine blade. On like an airplane, off like an airplane. On like an airplane, off like an airplane. It's very important that you understand how I'm operating these clippers. So again, go into the other two grooming springer heads. And watch those because I'm already using stuff that I've taught here I'm just grooming another Springer to give anybody a second or third chance to pick up on something the most important thing is learning how to use the clipper because trust me they will slice and dice and cut your dog if you are not careful here, I'm just going to kind of take it at an angle and feather it up so it's not a nine blade with the grain and it's not a nine blade against the grain. I'm taking it up at an angle, see, just to feather it in. Well, like I said, because he's, he's black, he's going to get hot. Now I'm pulling mm -hmm. the skin down. I would never run the clipper against the back skull, ever, ever, ever go down that dip. You're going to leave horrible clipper marks. So you either pull the skin up or you pull it back. And then when it springs back into its normal position, it is clippered without any clipper marks. I am still using a nine blade. But as I come off this dog in that airplane mode, I'm probably doing a little bit more exaggerated than I would because I know in a few minutes I'm going to be putting on my 7F blade and I'm going to have to blend that stopping start. That, yeah, that stopping place with the, um, with the new starting point with the longer blade. Okay, so that's it for the head. And just by the way, this is Noah, and he got his name because the day that he came up here to get picked up, the people drove back home in one of the most horrible rainstorms we've ever had in this area. And they could barely see. I think at one point they even had to pull under under underpass. It wasn't a tornado, it was just very heavy rain. So, Noah. And quite frankly, a lot a lot of dogs get their names. People go home and they don't name it right away. They, they watch the dog and they see the dog and maybe the dog has a name on the inside. And that, I know that sounds like a hippie thing, but Lordy B, I am an old hippie. So I might bring you guys up closer. This is a black dog, which is near, it's hard for me to see what I'm doing. So I have noticed when I'm filming and using black dogs, it's, it doesn't turn out well. You can't really see the stroke to stroke. The liver dogs, they, sh they pop right up. Uh, I, 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 just a reminder for everybody, on like an airplane, off like an airplane, and uh, the teeth of the clipper should always match the direction that the hair is growing. You can see the hair is growing this direction here, but as it comes off the side, see how it starts to do this? Here it was straight down. That is the way the hair was growing. You never want to go like this because the hair is kind of actually growing like this, wrapping its way around the rib cage, straight down the back because that is the way it's growing. Then as you get that first stripe done, then you can gradually start coming off. Whew. I don't know as a care we may need the AC, but the dogs aren't. I think it's more 
humid than hot. Yeah. So I'm just going stroke by stroke by stroke. Okay, my clippers are not hot. Always make sure you do that. Make sure the blade isn't hot. Heck, I've probably got three or four number nine blades floating around open. So if one does get hot or jams and doesn't cut on a certain kind of coat, I just pop another one in. Now here, and I explained this before, I go right off the side. The, 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 the rib cage starts to go in. I don't follow the rib cage in. So here's my clipper. And the minute the rib cage goes in, my clipper stays straight. Let's see if I can do an angle thing for you guys. Okay. Here's the rib cage, here's the rib cage, here's the rib cage, and then it goes straight. I don't follow it under and around. Rib cage, rib, rib and then straight. So well, that's how you do that. There's no reason that a pet sprinter can't be in what I call a modified show trim. There's no reason why any breed of dog being put into a pet trim can't be in a modified show trim. Unless you're doing something like a Yorkie, but even then, I do cute little teddy bears that make them look like they're four months old again. If you looked at their baby pictures and saw them eight years old going out the door, they would still look like a Yorkie, but a puppy. So, no reason. And of course the pet owners, they, you know, they look at the dog shows, they look at the calendars, they look at the Springer Spaniel books with all the champions, and they go, I want my dog to look like that. Why not? Oh God, I hope I didn't screw up that whole section. Might not look great, but at least it'll stay on. You never go against the grain under the tail, ever. Sensitive, scratchy. I'm barely, 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 just artistically going over the top. You never press your clipper against the anus. You're going to get a dog that's going to lick, 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 lick. The people are going to have a uh, $75 veterinarian bill and ointment to put on their butthole for a month. And if you're a pet groomer, you've lost a client. And if you're an owner, you are unhappy with yourself because you hurt poor Noah. And then you may never groom your dog again. My philosophy is a spring, well, my philosophy is any dog is better off being groomed at home but especially a Springer. I don't trust pet shops. I hear too many, too many horror stories, and that's around here. I hear too many horror stories nationally. Dogs being put in crates with heated dryers and be forgotten about. You come back and they're dead. Dogs up in these nooses. Now look how, look how, look how loose I have this noose on him. He don't even feel it. I have it up there. Oops, I didn't show you guys. I have it up there to give him a sense of balance. I don't have his head in the noose to strangle hold him up and let's not even go there but you know what I mean. Alright. I right, probably just saying that YouTube will take this down. Little algorithms looking for words that are going to incite violence. Well there should be no violence when you're grooming a dog. I did uh, schnauzers yesterday, filmed that, and I explained to people, terriers by nature can be feisty. That's what they're bred to do. You're not going to fight against their natural, their natural coating, genetic coating. So if you get a terrier up on your table, and they're getting feisty with you, the very, very, very best thing to do is ignore it. Ignore it. Just keep working and totally ignore it. 
don't harbor any emotions, nothing. Now, if they're really ranting and raving and spinning, and okay, you might have to do other things, but if it's just a dog that is standing steady and they're getting growly or they don't like their toenails being done and you're holding the foot out far enough away from their what I call the striking zone. Now, he's got real high bumpy shoulders. So again, I don't want to go in, so I'm going to pull this hair up to make a flat, tight, smooth surface. And then I'm going to let the hair go back over the shoulders. Because if I travel this over those shoulders, I'd likely have a clipper mark. Now, I opted, his hair was already so short, I said I was going to do him with a 7F. And after seeing how short his hair was, I started with the 7F, which is what I'm using, and I went ahead and finished it. Because after a month, it is taking a significant amount of hair off. Obviously, if you start a dog, and you know it comes every month or six weeks, and you want to get it shorter for the summer, and you go to your 5F blade, and hardly every, anything's coming off, well, then go down one blade. A lot of my Springer customers like a 9 blade year-round. They just want that. So. Okay. Keep your table clear it off so that you can see what you're doing. I would say most of the people on my Facebook page, uh, you know, Facebook throws you people out, their algorithm. So, and I go in once in a while when I think about it. Sometimes I'm just too busy. And I go, oh, look at all these people. And like 99.999% of them have little springers as their picture. So I'm going to use this on the, I only use cordless clippers around dog speed. That's it. I don't want that big clunky. Now what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to go in to what I call this little V or frog of the foot. One time, one time, done. This is another time. Also, how does this dog normally move when it's moving in its backyard? It's using its leg like this. Do you have, have you ever seen a dog run like that? No. Okay, so why would you pick up the leg like that to work on the dog? Don't do it. It's putting too much stress on the hip joint, the stifle. Just don't do it. Go in here to that Y again. One time, one time, done. I'm on Noah. Y again, done. Uh, probably not a really great way to show anybody this, but okay. Done. I don't fart around on the lips. This thing in the lips, I don't fart around with that. I don't fart around with their with their penis or their vulva. The inside of their back legs. All the places that a dog is going to be way more sensitive. Okie dokie kanoki. All right, now where am I? Talking kind of breaks my flow as far as what I do next. Might as well go ahead and do these ears again. I'm gonna, same thing with the scissor, tight, flat, smooth surface. 
Now, I've explained this before. I love these double ducks. Holding them this way, they are round. Flipping them, they become a straight shear. So you'll constantly see me flipping them around, my, around in my hand. Why? Put, put tools down, pick them up. Put the tools down, no. These things go in my hand and stay in my hand. And I'm smashing that ear leather. I know I am not going up against the ear leather. I'm going significantly in front of it. There's some hair left there. When you make that line, nobody would ever know that you're not up against the ear leather. The dog knows because you didn't cut it and it's not being raced to the vet. That's how the dog knows. And I suppose that's how you will know too. Now this, um, uh, some of you saw me do Noah's feet. Big paddle, wide feet. Well, this guy has them too. So, might as well go over that again. I take the wall in the highest setting. I'm gonna go up on these two sides. I like an airplane, I like an airplane. Same thing on this foot. All right, oh, right there. You've already made the foot tons. This is where I get the hair under the foot that's next to the webbing. You never want to go in there and carve that out because you're going to hurt the dog. Again, he is a pet. So I'm not going to be as careful and precise. Dremel for the toenails. Now, he's a pet, so I am going to Dremel off the front. And then my sides and my top. I, again, I have a uh, comprehensive video on my YouTube channel, Dog Tricks of the Trade, shortening those toenails. Just the toenails. So you can watch that. On the pets, I will take this front white. The front of the toenail that has grown out in the past four weeks. For pet people, if you have toenails that come in that have a huge amount of white on the front, start off with your guillotines, sure. Just don't go super, you don't need to go super crazy and super close, because you're going to follow it up with this Dremel method. Again, he's a pet, so you are seeing me take off most of that white on the front. I'm certainly not going to take all of it off because I don't want to go into the quick because they'll probably yelp and pull away because it has a little bit of nerve ending in there. So one nice thing about this method for pet owners is that you can't bleed the dog. Some of the pet owners, oh, I'm so afraid to do toenails. The last time I did them, the dog, you know, I cut the toenail and it blood all over the place. Well, yeah, true. But if you get used, get your dog used to this Dremel method as a puppy, this should be one of the first things you buy along with your puppy dish and your doggy bed and whatever else your breeder tells you to do. Again, I'm not pulling it like this. I'm keeping it up under the dog where it would normally go. You can also see how I'm holding this, which is probably way different, I don't know, than a craftsman. I don't know what craftsmen do with these things. I mean, I've never used this for carpentry or craftsman stuff in my life. That's a different YouTube channel. <laughs> Entirely different YouTube channel. If you're not using your clippers, put them on a different table. The dog doesn't know what it's knocking into when it's when it's flopping around. This is a pet, so it's not that important that I get that perfectly round foot. On my show feet, I tell you not to pick up the foot in the air. That is true. It's the, and this isn't even do as you 
do as I say, don't do as I do. This is because he's a pet. It, it doesn't matter. And pet people are going to do a much better job with their dog if they can get the foot and the, the device and their eyes closer together. Now what am I doing here? This is another mistake people make. Do you see how long the hair is here? I am matching the length, this toe hair length, identically with the hair that's already growing on the foot. I'm not going down deeper. That is a big mistake people make. And then they end up with these big feet that look like this with holes in them. Ah, what did I do wrong? Well, that's what you did wrong. So you want to leave all of that hair. See, I turned these scissors around, turning them around again. They are round. The dog is round. So however I have to hold these shears to match the roundness, that is what I'm going to do. around through this foot. Well, I've got the foot up. Now, let me show you. Look how much hair I left. Feel that hair I left? And when I dried the dog, I tried to fluff all that hair up. There you go. Now this is where you can use your handy dandy. I love these things. This is the only other shear I own. That's it. Little foot shear. Now, I'm for again, for pet owners, you can pick up the foot and bring it up to you. On the back feet, you do not want to expose the toenail. Now oh, here's that trick. Okay, now I'm going to pick this up. See all this hair? I'm going to push it over to the side. And I'm just going to go in there, in that corner where the hair is. Then I'm going to do it in reverse, just the corner. I'm not sketching out the toes just the corner just the corner I don't know how close up an iPad can get stop corner corner do it again here okay corner corner just, uh, I'm removing the hair over top the toenail. That's all I'm doing. I'm leaving everything else. And I'm actually pulling it to the side and taking out that corner. I'm pulling this. I will be posting this up on my YouTube channel. I'm not doing any corrective or tricky show grooming here. This is just pretty basic pet grooming. So anything that's basic, again for pet owners you absolutely positively can pick up this foot and bring it closer to you so you can see what you are doing. I demand more from my show dog students. Now, this dog appears to have an extremely elongated oval foot. He doesn't in bone structure. It's just that his toenails are so long. Look, he's a pet. That's how long his toenail is. See that? That's pretty darn long. 
even though he comes once a month. Okay. All right. You see how long that is? There, up against my purple. And so what I don't want to do is I really don't want to trim this foot to expose all that toenail. I want the hair to fall over the toenail. And because he's a pet, he's not getting ready for the show ring. It doesn't matter if I'm not trimming this foot tight and making it look either perfectly oval or perfectly round. This is a pet trim. The main difference being on show dogs, their toenails are way shorter. But still I would do it identically as I've done there, which is I, I would still leave the hair fall over the toenail. So you don't see the nail. But again, the shape that you end up getting is a more perfect oval or a more, more perfect round foot because the toenails are shorter. Hocks are done identically as a show dog's hocks would be. There is no difference here, none. I may, I'm, I may not leave as much hair on the hock as a show dog, but again, that depends on the structure. Noah, Noah! I can see him thinking about moving. Ugh. Straight across. Now, here's Noah. That's about the thickness of a Belgian comb. And you know what? For a show dog that has a lovely bend of stifle like this dog does, and this big, huge, thick hip, there's no corrective grooming to be done on this dog. This dog has an ideal rear end. Perfect. I don't need to do any corrective grooming. So, in that case, the hocks on this dog are only the depth of my Belgium comb. I did a corrective grooming video a little while back on rear ends, hocks, stifles, where I had a dog that did not have, I mean, a be beautiful moving dog, absolutely gorgeous dog. Dog moves with perfection, but standing, I felt he could give the appearance of having more bend in his stifle. For a show dog, you want a shorter hawk than this. The Europeans trim their dogs this way because actually this is perfect. Look, there's one third, one third up to the stifle, and then one third up. Right, I can feel his hip bone right there. One third, one third, one third. That is exactly how a Springer should be built. But in America, because of the pet grooming that we brought into this breed, now all the judges want to see a short little hawk. So you have to give the optical illusion that your dog has a short little hawk. If Springers really had the short little hawks that you see in all the dog show pictures or that you see in the group rings with the fancy schmancy handlers, they wouldn't be able to walk. Have you ever seen those shows on if women really had the dimensions? Barely am I going over this area. I'm taking the long hairs away from the end. Those shows about if women really had Barbie's measurements, they couldn't walk. It's, it's not possible. It's anatomically impossible. So the same thing, a lot of these, a lot of these springers that are groom quote unquote as show dogs with a short little hawk. I would groom this dog to have that kind of a hawk for a judge, but yet the hawk's all the way up here. But if the hawk really was there, this dog wouldn't be able to move. <laughs> He'd probably topple down. I might even have to have him euthanized because he couldn't walk. We're getting one of those wheelie carts that you sit them in and they just wheelie cart themselves all over the place. Please. But with the fancy smancy, and when I say pet grooming, what I mean is that we're, we're making all these lines on these show dogs. I did that for pets my whole life, and then suddenly two handlers started doing it, and it was 
two well-known handlers and every that set the trend and off we go into I don't know this dog's got ha kind of hairy legs but not really really hairy YouTube I have hairy leg syndrome how to get rid of hairy legs but this dog doesn't have that kind of hairy legs but he does have some gross stuff sticking up now this is a pet I'm not showing you thinning shear work here to digress to my show people watching. No. In a pet trim, this is what I would do. In a pet trim, I do want to make this line across there because it looks really, really cool for the pet owners. I would not have done that on a show dog. So sometimes when I'm showing you stuff, I gotta. Now I am gonna pull this out and just barely take off the tips of this bent everything down that's your final finish ah! well I am gonna get decapitated one day so pull this out turn these around to make them a straight shear Straight down. Hey, is that schnauzer dry dry? Oh, huh? No, I mean, did you hand dry it? No. Uh -uh. Oh, you've got to hand dry it. Oh, okay. Right. Go take the dryer mm -hmm. and hand dry it. There you go, Missy. Yep, get it hand dried. Then, again, you wouldn't do the feathery on a show dog this way, gang. This is a pet. And with the genetic background on this dog, oh my God, he would grow a tremendous show coat, which I don't want a pet person to keep up with. And if he were a finished champion, I wouldn't want to keep up with it. So all my finished champions end up at some point going into a pet trim if I don't intend to put them in the confirmation ring again. Now, I haven't touched the sides, have I? Hey, Deb, you haven't touched the sides. What are you going to do with the sides? I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the sides. Stop. No, I'm gonna, and again, the blade of your thinning shear should always match the direction that the hair is growing. So, I'm just going to ever so careful. And you never, on this technique, probably really never open and close your thinning shears twice. It's all a one, one, one. And then brush. Little bit of hair sticking up there. Now, I can see what a huge difference that was. Uh, it's probably not going to come up on film because, again, this is a black dog. And black dogs are just horrid to try to see. I'm going to try to now, you see how all this is rough and it just, you can all, I'd say you can see a clipper line, but there isn't a clipper line because again, when I clippered, I went over and then I came straight down. I didn't go in like that. Where the rib cage stopped, started to go in, my clipper went straight down. It just gives an appearance of a quote unquote clipper line, but I'm going to get rid of that. by doing this. So. There's no reason why a pet can't have a modified show trim. This dog can go home looking like the breed it was meant to be. There. Beautiful. Now, while I have him here, I'm going to do a modified underline like the show dogs have. Turn this around because I'm going to go that direction there. Stop. Noah. Now usually I get Noah done in about 20 minutes 
but I'm kind of putzing around here doing things a lot slower while I'm filming here I would absolutely positively take a thinning shear not a straight shear it's gonna look like crap if you take a straight shear wow does that look nice a little bit of black hair there stop oh there is that oh, clippers gonna go on the floor shouldn't be up on the table if your clippers not in your hand should not be on the table it's that simple Because this dog comes once a month, I could usually get him finished in 20 minutes. I'm taking way longer than I normally do. And he knows it, and he doesn't like it. So, this direction and about there, I turn my scissors around. And I go like that. Okay. You see how I'm working this? You can really see it here because of the coloring of his coat. How I'm working that down into that. Oh. Now he doesn't have as much hair on this side as the other side. And this is sticking out. So I'm going to Take that off a little bit. When I'm grooming, I typically don't do one part of the dog to its absolute finish, then go to the next part of the dog, do its absolute finish. I just don't do that. <coughs> I work on it, I go to the next piece, I work on that a little bit. So, quote unquote, I'm always working around the dog. I know I did those hawks a little while ago, but now when I comb them, there's still a little bit of hair. He's got funny hair sticking out here, so I'm just going to carve that off. Oh, here's another one of those nice black lines. Now this time I'm going to do it this direction, but pet owners, pet owners really like that kind of stuff, where they can see those sharp, sharp lines. I would not do this on a show dog. Maybe just depends on where it is and what it's doing and why it's there. And show dogs are completely different, different recipe different plan. Now this uh, this dog gets really hot in the summer so Shelly has asked me now that I can find my clipper. Oh this is a trick. 7F blade. I'm gonna lift these side hairs and right in front of the penis and yes, I'm pushing down like a normal clipper. I'm going to make a stripe the whole way up. I know where that penis is. I'm leaving the hair on the penis. Unlike the miniature schnauzer that I did yesterday, I am not going to carve out that penis with my clipper. That is one of the downsides with these spinny tables and corded clippers. If you spin, spin, spin your table. Huh. And there is that stripe on his belly. I'd say 99.999% of the time I do this for all my pet dogs that I've coat. Nobody will ever see that. Nobody will ever know 
But trust me, no one will know. Because he will lay down on the nice cold tiles in the kitchen. Now, I'm pulling this hair out of the way. Don't get too close to the remaining testicle sack. Testicles, if they're not neutered testicles, but they are. This is optional in the winter, but in the summer, it is a must. It is not something, don't do it on a show, dog. Pet trimming, pet trimming. I gotta learn to edit these videos so I can go in and put great big red signs. Warning, warning, warning. Alert, alert, alert. Don't do this. Pet trimming only. I'll get there. I'm looking into more rudimentary editing programs now. Because what Facebook gives you is not much. I noticed that this stifle here on the other side was shorter. So I'm coming back to shorten it on this side. I guess the last time I grew him, he must have been curly or holding that hair up in such a way that I didn't see it. Saw it this time. Okay, table clean. This is the first time that you're with me. You notice that I always groom dogs on a fatigue mat. Look how thick this thing is. Look. And it's also black. Don't get something with oranges and apples and roses and oh but my dog's name is Rosie no and go have that stitched on your shirt or your underwear or something but don't put it on your tabletop just get black don't even get gray black follow Debbie is what you want to see with all different colors of dogs you want to be able to see the line of this hair up against that table because that's what I'm trimming to. Here. Now let's see. See how if I'm looking at the front I can see some of this sticking up. Let's get this off. He's got hair growing out of his knuckle. I do a tremendous amount of Phoenicia work on my pet grooming. Tremendous amount. Okay. Just like you show dogs, I'm going to trim this shape in. Of course it's shorter than a show dog. But nonetheless it is still going to get trimmed in. Ah, a mat. So you never pull through a mat with your comb. Never. If anything, the comb is used to check for mats. Now when I'm taking out a mat, yes, I will open and close and open and close and open the close. The thinning chair in the same spot. Many times. It is not unusual for the dogs to have mats in their armpits because the skin is always moving up against each other. And of course, oop, it's still bad. All right, do not do this. I'm gonna have to get some flash cards. And just hold them up. I'm gonna take my seven blade and go into that armpit. And since that one matted, the other one's gonna mat too. Not for show dogs, not for show dogs. 
Pets, yes. Pets, yes. You'll never see it. The people will never see it. And now I won't get mad at there. Okie dokie. So, I am pretty satisfied with that little pet trim. What to do with the ears? Well, pets have much shorter ears than show dogs. That's for sure. So, again, you can do it one of two ways. Right, this is the way I do my show ears. I just pull them straight. And cut them right across. But most of the time on my pet trims, not for show trims, there it is, I will curve shear. I will make them, I will give them that lady look from the dark lady and the tramp look from the Disney movie. I know, I know, I know you about had it here. So if you never take so long, what's wrong with you? Ah. So I do start off with the thinning chair, yes I do. Then I go like that. And then I kind of make a little bit of a U. While he's sitting, It's a good time to pull down the scissors and anything that's uneven, even it up because this, potentially this is a place where an owner is going to see the dog sitting in front of them and staring down into this chest cavity. So there, I just made that all pretty, 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 pretty. Okay, now I promise, I'm like almost, almost, almost done. And I know for you, I've taken like almost forever. Now the last thing that I might do is go around the co dog, comb everything down. And I've got a black mat on the floor over there so I can see this white hair against it. I'm going to calm everything down. Ten minute perfect finish. And this is where I might see a stray hair that isn't giving me that exact perfect line that I want. So this would be the very last thing that I do. Everything down, down, down. A lot of pets still come in because I bred them and they're all going to have show coat. So if you want to take the thinning shear and go up under, feathering on the legs, on the sides, on the butt, not for show dogs. Okay, Now my comb can go through that like it's air. There, there's no resistance at all. So if you've got a pet that you're grooming, and your comb cannot go through feathering because it's resisting, then the fe feathering is too thick. I don't care if it's an Australian cattle dog, a rough collie, I don't care what it is, Springer Spaniel, doesn't matter. If your comb cannot go through that hair as if it's air, air, then you need to get in there with your thinning shears and thin it out. Already ready. the schnauzer to leave the lead on him and there we go folks put that in with the schnauzer video from yesterday she put the schnauzer in the crate and then reached in to take the lead off of the schnauzer so what did she do wrong <laughs> well first of all there are tons of dogs 
tons, even sprayers, that don't want you reaching into their crate at them. No. So she put that dog in the crate, and then she reached back to take that lead off. So I'll have a little lesson with Sakira after I'm done with Noah today. Explain why he did that, but that is a terrier. So here we've got Noah. And there we've got Noah. Let's spin him around here on the runway. The fashion runway. And there we've got Noah. Ta-da! Okay, so that's my pet trim lesson for today. I thanks everybody for tuning in. This will be up on the YouTube channel soon. Go ahead and look at it. This is Noah. Um, please, 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 if you like my work, push that ding for you like it. Thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel because as I put up new ones, then it'll pop into your homepage. You'll open up one morning with your cup of coffee, and guess what? You're going to see me, grooming Noah. All right, so do that for me, please. If you have a show, Springer, you can find my really, really intense, comprehensive show grooming videos on a company called Gumroad. G U M. R-O-A-D, I think it's slash Deb Kirk, D-E-B-K-I-R-K. You can also go to my Facebook page, which is the same name as the YouTube page, duh. Dog Tricks of the Trade, and they're all there. Just push a button, you go into the platform, push another button, takes credit cards, and it downloads right on your laptop. Couldn't be easier. So, there we are, but all my pet grooming stuff is always up on my, um, it's always up on my YouTube channel because I like the pet owners to be able to see what we in the Springer world are doing with our babies. Okay, so goodbye for now. Thanks for joining. And it's only 3.30, so way too early for a cup of wine. But I am going to hit the cranberry juice that's in the refrigerator. That's for sure. Okay, bye to everybody on Facebook. Bye to you guys. And welcome, if it's your first time, and welcome back if you've been here before. Okay, bye-bye. Noah, what do you think? Huh? You done? You didn't want to be an actor today, did you? Huh? No. You didn't want to be an actor. He says, I am so done. I just want to go home.